to Cedric and Ash in the House, part of Long Beach Opera's Artist Afternoons. If you're wondering where Ash is, I kicked his butt to the curb. Well, not yet, but I did put him at the back of the bus. He'll be coming on later in this episode, but I figured I should give you guys as much time between the last time you saw him and the next time you have to see him. So he'll be on later, and uh, you're welcome. Anyway... Now, I should tell you about the aria that I just sang. It's called Con la flamme de l'amour from Le Jolie Fille de Pet. It's uh, an opera that's never performed, like hardly ever, but it's a Bizet aria and I really like it. Uh, I actually like it better than Torre Ador, the one you all know. So I sang it. It's a drinking song and uh, he's drinking because he just saw the person that he really likes, Catherine who has been abducted. He saw her being abducted by a duke. And so he goes to a tavern and acts a fool. I, you're probably thinking, well, I couldn't gather any of that from what you performed. And you're probably right. I dumbed it down a little bit. I took a little nuanced approach to the acting because I normally uh, sing that and I'm acting a lot more inebriated. And I figured the last thing I want to do without announcement is come on to this live series, which already is crazy for me to be doing in the first place, and uh, and have you think that I really am crazy, and then tune out. So uh, the next aria is I'll set up the scene, and then I can do a little better job of portraying what that character actually does. Anyway, so I am a bass baritone. 
uh, and my career is kind of trifold. I'm a bass baritone, I'm a college administrator at USC, and I'm also a real estate enthusiast. Um, I know that's an odd thing, but that's kind of how I describe it. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit back about my background. I mean, every one of those areas, there's a reason why I do all three of those things, and, and I'll explain that at some later date, but I'll give you a bit of history of my design interest because that is indicative to this particular episode, episode number two on the docket. Uh, when I was a kid, I don't know if any of you guys had families like this, but uh, my family and my larger family, there are many people I knew when I was a kid that had plastic on their couches. And I never understood why they would put class plastic on their couches. I mean, I understood why. I just didn't understand why. So um, my mom actually took that a step further and she even put plastic runners all over our living room floor, meaning not just in the traffic areas, but over the whole thing. And I thought, now look, that's crazy and that's crazy and I don't understand the crazy. So uh, while she was out one day, I went and I took up all the runners off the floor with the exception of the ones that made sense, you know, the ones that you know, led you through the traffic area, which I did not like as well. But I left those on the ground and I went and took the others down the alley to a distant neighbor's house and I threw them in their trash can. Then I came home. When my mom came home, she was like, where are all my runners? And I said, oh, you know, I, uh, I washed them and then I put them on the fence in the backyard and then they just disappeared. I guess someone stole them. Anyway, cut two years later and I was... Uh, well, not yet. I was at. I went to. I went to Interlochen Arts Academy. It's a great school. If you guys don't know what Interlochen Arts Academy is, look it up. It's an internationally known school that attracts um, musicians, young musicians from across the world, and uh, they have a summer music camp and they have a an academy for high school students. I went to both. I was a, a, a camper at the National Music Camp. Then years later. I was accepted to their program and I was um, a student for the, my junior and senior year of high school. But what's important about that, in addition to the training I got, was that I had a dorm room to design. I was excited. And, uh, and I did all this design stuff. I tried my hand at this and that and the other. And um, as, it ha as, as circumstances would have it, uh, my, my, my roommate, has his father was an interior designer. Now, I didn't even know what an interior designer was at the time, but when my, my friend explained it to me, I thought, okay, that, that sounds like a, a really cool thing. And so his father visited campus and, his, and he said, oh my God, who designed this room? This is really cool. And he gave me the greatest compliments and I was like, oh my God, I was complimented by this guy who knows what he's doing. Maybe I know what I'm doing. So it gave me all the confidence I needed to continue doing that. The next year I became a resident advisor in the dormitory, had my own room, and what did they do that for? I decked that place out. I mean, it was super cool. All the kids loved it. I loved it. We had the best time there. In fact, I would stay in that room today. Cut two years later, I became a resident advisor at USC, and I was a resident advisor for my last, I don't know, three or four years because I got my bachelor's and my master's at USC. So I was, I was a resident advisor for a long time and I had my own apartment. Now, can you imagine? I mean, just, you can't imagine because it was just crazy. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I designed my butt off. I tried all different things. I had all these people over. I loved it. I enjoyed it. I found that I really had a knack for it, or at least I thought I did. And so by the time I graduated, I knew that I really liked design, I really liked having a nice apartment, and I really didn't want to pay for it. I really liked not having to pay for it. So I thought, now how am I going to parlay this into the real world? So I decided, ding, 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 ding. I'll interview to be a resident manager at an apartment building, and they'll either reduce my rent or pay for my rent, because Lord knows I couldn't afford the rent for where I wanted to live. So I interviewed and got denied at, I don't know, two or three places. But simultaneously, I had uh, auditioned at LA Opera to be a resident artist. 
and I got that gig. And so I got the gig, and just like in, in, in design, I was like bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I liked everything. It was so exciting, all the sets, all of the, the big cast, all of the bravura. I was like, this is just too cool. And uh, I met a lot of people, had a lot of friends, and two friends in particular made a huge impression. One is Reed Bruton, and one is Jamie Offenbach. They both are basses, bass baritones as well, and they both were interested in real estate and in singing, and they were dibbling and dabbling in their own things. And I think it was Reed who introduced me to this book called Anyone Can Be a Homeowner. It was about income property and people purchasing homes um, as income properties and letting their tenants pay their rent, living in actually the income property and letting the tenants pay the rent. And I thought that was like, oh my God, wow, well, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. And then um, Jamie gave me the, the courage because he, he coached me in um, dealing with creative financing because, you know, we all had creative finance issues being artists. So he coached me in that effort and he had already purchased some homes and flipped them and his design aesthetic was like beyond anything that I could ever imagine. So anyway, I took all of that inspiration and I parlayed it into my own situation. I had been living in an apartment that I was paying for, which I never wanted to do. I just wanted to live, you know, like everyone else. Anyway, uh, I had fixed the guy's place up to the nine. I had stripped all the hardware in the, throughout the property. I had painted it. I had uh, replaced like the sinks and everything. And I remember I was headed to Home Depot one day and I was going to purchase a um, closet organizer for my closet. And then I thought, you know what, enough. I'm done putting money into someone else's property. I'm going to rub both coins, one from LA Opera, one from USC together and buy me, buy myself a um, income property. And that's exactly what I did. Now, at the same time as I bought that property, I had been hired to do my dream role um, in a small company in mid-California uh, in San Luis Obispo called Pacific Repertory Opera. I was hired to do the role of Mephistopheles in Faust, hence the French reference, and we'll get to that as well. So I um, traveled up there and I had a homestay and my homestay just serendipitously happened to be with two architects. Two architects who were professors at Cal State Poly in San Luis Obispo. And so I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna show them a picture of my new property and I'm going to have them help me design it so that I don't disturb the architecture and ar architectural integrity of the place. And their place, by the way, was magnificent. It was like nothing you've ever seen before. Cool place. And so a after dinner one night, I went into my room and came back out with this picture of my, my, uh, my building. And so I uh, showed it to them. And as soon as I showed it to them, they paused. Then they looked at each other. And then they just busted up laughing. I was like, what in the world? What's, what's really going on here? So I asked them and they were just laughing, laughing and laughing. They're like, Cedric, dear boy, this place has no architectural integrity. Anything you do to it would be an improvement. And <laughs> that's my type of humor. So I thought it was hilarious, but I was like, well, look, I mean, there's gotta be something. I mean, you see it, I need to change it. They're like, this is what you do for things like this. You put as many windows on it as possible and you flood in the light and that will help you out. And so that's exactly what I did. And I'd like for you to take a look at it. Now, this is the picture that I presented to the architects that they got such a kick out of. Pay special attention to the orientation of the doors and windows. Hello and welcome to my home in the city. I say in the city because it is exactly that. The neighborhood is surrounded by major arteries on each side, so you will hear noise. Although it's from a few blocks away, you will hear it as if it's right here and it will distract you, unfortunately. Think of it as our little um, ocean in the city. 
they're like crashing waves. And here comes a wave right now. Here, 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 and it's gone. So now I will let you in on how I uh, transform this space. If you Whenever I purchase a property, I, in, in addition to making the interior as best it can be, one of the things that I think is my responsibility is to try to elevate the neighborhood as much as possible. Not that I am the know-all or end-all or be-all, but I do that in three different ways. I add as much greenery as possible. I add um, lighting, landscape lighting, which I'll show you later. And I also keep the yard as manicured as possible. I think that's the least you can do. I have a, um, a big time landscape architect friend who doesn't live very far from here. In fact, I have two landscape architects friends. Um, and Brent, who doesn't live very far from here, he actually went door to door to purchase his property and asked his neighbors if he could plant trees in their boulevard. Because who doesn't want to live on a tree lined street? So what I did is I, the first thing I did was plant trees in my boulevard. And you can see them here. They're actually somewhat mature. I had them trimmed uh, last season, um, but they offer a lot of privacy. And of course they add to the tree lined streets. One other tip, the best thing for you to do is to find out what tree species is the dominant tree on that street and continue in that same vein. It will add a more unified look to the neighborhood. In addition to adding trees, I tore down what was existing and I added a retaining wall with hedges. Having a retaining wall afforded me the possibility of adding pilasters. Now, I didn't know what pilasters were or what they were called when I first purchased this property, but I did know that I saw them in Beverly Hills and I wanted them in my life. So, I like them because they add an entrance before your entrance. You have kind of like this, I don't want to call it a wall, but this barrier before you get into your yard and especially if you have a fountain in your yard, you hear that little babbling sound and you come around the corner and you're wondering what's going on in there. Come on, let me show you what's going on in here. Now having hedges in a property or adding hedges to a property is not always the best application because it kind of gives you the impression that you're trying to wall yourself off from the community and sometimes you are trying to wall yourself off from the community. But you really have to consider the footprint of the purchase that you that you that you purchased. You want to um, expand upon it and reimagine it to make it the best that it can be. Because I don't have a lot of yard space in general, I've created several little vignettes of yard spaces and I always wanted something where I had at least one area that was green grass that was somewhat expansive. I missed the mark on this because it's not large enough to be expansive, but it is what it is and I like it. Um, so welcome to my little garden oasis in the city. Any city that you live in, you want to come back home and have a garden or some greenery or some escape from the hustle and bustle of the actual city. The building, as you can see, or if you can remember from the previous pictures, I completely change the orientation of the building, adding the entrances on the side and creating as many windows on the front facade of the building as possible, just as the architects in San Luis Obispo told me to do. So I added French windows at the top and French windows at the bottom. I'm not a Francophile, but when I was in my 20s, I really admired everything French, French culture, French architecture. I started with the French aria and I'm going to end, not end, well, we'll see. I, my next aria will be another French aria, which is actually taken from the opera that I was singing when I first purchased this property called Faust by Gounod. I was portraying the character of Mephistopheles, who's singing in this particular aria a serenade to Marguerite. It's a facetious serenade to, to Marguerite, but a serenade nonetheless, which if I didn't have the roaring ocean behind me, I could have sung from this garden looking up at the balcony where Marguerite would be housed. Come on in the house and I'll show you the interior of my space. Oh, Catalina, come here, no, 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 no,
I can hear you. You look at this. You got that expensive mic up there. Look at you trying to be all fancy. It's not even the microphone that's being used right now. Ain't that a shame? I just have this set up in my bedroom because we was just doing live stuff for the SoCal Vocalist Relief Fund, and I'm stuck up in here like I'm in my own, you know, private Oprah Studios. I know that's right. So you were you you were using that for the relief uh, event? Yeah, th this was um, so I figured out because the internet is a wonder. I figured out how to put this microphone. Wait, are you ready for it? Yeah, yeah into this thing. See, I was trying to figure that out. I was trying to, I'm, you know, I have all these mics that I purchased and I can't use any of them. They don't really work that well. But if I can hook it up to my cell phone, I could use it more it, effectively. There's a, I use the, um, wait, let me see if I can find it here for you real quick. I'll show you. Um, it's hanging here. So this little, this dongle mm -hmm. is, a, it's a camera link basically for your, Lightning, it's got the light. Right, yeah, for your, for your phone. Your phone or iPad. Yeah. And then this is plugged in. USB. This USB is actually the plug that goes into my, um, my sound YouTube. interface thing. Yeah. And then it sends, sends it all into, voila. So I'm sending this, this guy all through mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, you know. And let I'm me guess. <laughs> and let me guess, $30 for the, uh, for the you know, adapter. Right. For this Everything can be solved with an adapter is as long as you give adopter. Apple more money. That's it. They just want 30 more of your dollars. Right, right, right. Just 30 Get more. Out. Forget Get the $1,000 phone. Forget the $1,000 phone. We but want 30 more. Thirty nine ninety nine <laughs> For you to do anything with it. Right. Oh, you wanted it to work? Right, right. Oh. So you know I told everybody at the top of the show that I kicked you off the show. <laughs> See? See? <laughs> I told him, you know, I, told, I said, I said, uh, if you're looking for Ashley, I kicked him to the curb. Didn't happen. And, and, I'm then I said, and then I said, no, 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 I didn't kick him to the curb. I just kicked him to the back of the show because I wanted to give as much time between the last time they saw that face to the time they have to see it again. <laughs> <laughs> so much, Cedric. Because look, here's the deal. <laughs> <laughs> then people know better than that. They know you ain't got the authority, the wherewithal, or the good enough strength to get rid of me. You ain't. You know they thought happen. some divine intervention happened. They're like, thank God. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody praying against me like they praying <laughs> against you, Cedric. <laughs> people pray anyway. for me. <laughs> anyway, it's not true, people. Here I am. He didn't get rid of me. <laughs> so what did you? Uh, what do you got lined up for next week? So next week I'm actually going to be uh, talking a little bit about what to do when things go wrong. Oh so my God. I'm, I'm, I'm just, this is sort of like 
off the top of my head, but I've been playing around with the idea of calling it like something the effect feeling down, mm -hmm. go into your dance. Like, right. are you, are you in this rut? Here's what you do to get out of it. And so we're going to, I'm going to talk about different things that I've done while I'm feeling funky. i look as artists, you know, this, we ride like waves, right? Like always we're emotional and then we're not all the time. So this is just another emotion for us. This pandemic is just another vibe for us to ride out. So <laughs> I'm trying to talk about all the things that I'm doing and usually do to combat that. And one of the things, as you know, is all of my crossover work all of the stuff right, that I right. do for music. So I'm right. gonna be talking about I'm gonna be talking about my album, Cedric. I'm gonna talk Oh about wow. It. All right. And I'm play talk, some. And play some. I'm gonna play some of it and talk about the project and some other things that I've been doing and working on, but I wanna, you know, share a little bit of my extra work that I do. Oh you have to. You have yeah, to positive, positive something that is creative and can be taken away. That doesn't I'm not saying that everything has to be purposefully uplifting. No, but, but bring bring a bring a bring a, a good spirit to come it. Come on, bring a good spirit to whatever you do. And right. so I know that right now it's easy to have that just drown or silenced or put under the under the table. But I'm just trying to remind people and remind really myself of what it is, as exactly. you know really just exactly. felt there you know all of us all of us positivity and 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 choosing it because i think that it's easy to just not be positive i could easily be negative and sad and whatever but mm -mm, it's a choice i love it well okay so we should sing this uh this duet and it's about you know renewed friendship you know the whole vibe positivity the official leaving the, leaving the drama behind and going forth so with good. a new renewed friendship so so what I'm hearing from you, Cedric, is that you're willing to admit in public. No, no, no. Don't go there. Our friends that we do have <laughs> like a real bromance that we are friends. That's called a bridge too far. See, I know you but just. We can one. portray characters all day. I'm oh, just this. Oh, it's just acting. <laughs> Cedric ain't that good at acting anyway. We know. <laughs> right, it's right. All character plays. Right, all right, time. right. We call it typecasting. So, no, it's. It's fine. You don't have to tell people the truth. They can see it as they hear it. They will experience the true nature of our friendship. We are really friends. Well, let's, let's 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 see what they think about this next. They gonna movie. love it. They gonna love so. it so. more so than my part than your part. Well, you know, you do. You are the tenor, and that's what they think all the time. It's a lie, but that's what they think all the time. I don't even. I don't, I'm gonna call your mama right now. So I'm gonna go. Do I need to get Miss Pearl's number? You know, that's the only reason I like you guys because be, I, I like you because of your mom and your and your great grandmother. You know, good well. I thought they were the best people in the world. See, when I was thinking about kicking you to the curb many times, I thought, but I do like his family. They, I'm so they are good people. I don't know how. I don't know what happened to him, but I do like his mama. I will say this. I will say this, and I'm gonna let you go because I'm tired of looking at your face. I'm. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna say two things. Once. The first time I met your mother, you remember what I said to her? I said, Miss Pearl, I'm so sorry. I don't know. What, you know what she said? Thank you. I said, I know. I don't know how you dealt with this this long. I'm so sorry. And number two. I bet you did. And number two, I'm just about sick and tired of every time I talk to my aunt and my mom about about what I'm doing at work, they say, Oh, is Cedric doing that? You know I love you. You my know aunt, I love them. First my, of all, I love both of them, but you know I love that your your aunt. She is aunt, trip. Miss Fabulous. Yes. Beyond she, fabulous. Beyond fabulous. She, she always wants to know what it. Cedric is doing and how wonderful he I, is. I told you, I knew she was smart. And I mean, I'm just, like, I'm good too, Aunt Lisa. I'm good. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, yeah. Your family loves you, and everyone knows it. All of our colleagues, they're like, oh, my God. I mean, you, you get the award for the most attended performances by your family. I mean, I your grandmother, great-grandmother used to come to everything. I, before she left us, she, I don't think Grandma missed the show. In fact, you know, when she was, when she was really going before, before she passed, Mom would take her out of, out of the state to see me. So, like, wow. you know, in her 90s, and it, well, wow. in, into the first few years of her being 100, she wow. came to see me in Seattle and in San Francisco. And we joked because one time she came and she was so tired. We had to, they took her to like three nights of the, the run. And mm -hmm. by the third night, she had seen the whole show. Oh my God. <laughs> but she slept through it. You know, I love she it. I love it. Night I mean, and then really, <laughs> Ashley, that's a, that's a blessing and a half. It, it I mean, really to have, is. have had her in your life uh, all that time. Truly. To live such a rich life into such advanced years. I mean, it's just like... That's a blessing beyond blessings. It was phenomenal. I mean, it was Oh, oh, oh. 
week I'll feature an HGTV-style reveal highlighting a project that I've completed in my home. This week, I'm primarily featuring the south end of my living room as the north end is currently being used as Broadcast Central. At the end of each episode, I'll have a how-to segment featuring a project that you can complete in your home. This week, I'm featuring these drapery rods, which are constructed using simple electrical conduit piping. To start, you'll need a piece of wood. I chose a random 2x4 that I had in my garage. You'll need to take the measurement of the diameter of the pipe and transfer it to whatever ever piece of wood you found. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, if it's too large, you'll have to cut it down. You have to use personal protective equipment at all times. Your allergies will thank you. I've been using it for years. It's not just used for COVID purposes. You don't have to use a piece of equipment to cut it down if you just get a one-by-one one from your local home improvement store. I didn't have a one-by-one, one, 
but I do have a miter saw, so I can cut down a 2x4 to 1x1. And there it is. Once you get that, you'll want to transfer the circumference of the pipe to the bottom of the square peg to make it easier uh, to use as a guide when you're whittling down the wood to the correct size. You want to narrow it down to just beneath, just smaller than the circumference of the actual pipe. So the small end will fit inside of the pipe and have a tight fitting. And so you'll see the markings on the wood as such. You just take the easiest thing is to take a chisel and a hammer and just whittle the wood down. You can also use a knife like they did in the olden days and whittle it down that way. But it's simple enough just to shave off enough wood so that the end piece is snug in the pipe as so. Then you take the hammer and hammer it the rest of the way in. As I said, it will be a tight fit, so you'll need a hammer to slug it in there, and it's actually very easy to do, as you'll see. Remove the excess shavings, and there you have it. A wooden piece to connect a finial to. You'll need a drill. If you don't have one, I'm sure your neighbor does. Borrow a drill and just drill a hole straight in the middle of a piece of wood and then screw in your finial of choice. Pretty soon, voila, you have a drapery rod that usually costs a lot more than six or seven bucks, which is what I spent for that, other than the finial. I hope you've enjoyed today's uh, segment of In the House, episode number two with Sid and Ash. Before I move on, I'd like to remind you that the how-to section that you just saw contains a conduit electric piping. It's just electric piping, and it's located at any big box home improvement store. It comes in shiny finishes. It comes in rustic finishes. It's basically whatever that particular store has on hand. They're typically uh, standard sizes, 6, 8, 10. There even be, may even be some longer. You can cut them down to size using a Dremel, using a hacksaw, using a grinder, and they're a great value. Remember to tune in to Long Beach Opera's Artist Afternoons every day at 4 p.m. On Mondays, there's Latin Heat. On Tuesdays, there's Will Kowski or Won't Kowski. And on Wednesdays, there's Covey Cabin Productions. Also, remember to re promote your local restaurants in whatever community you live in. If you live in the Long Beach community on the corner of Long Beach Boulevard and East 3rd Street, there's a restaurant called Amotoli. Amotoli. It's a Mediterranean restaurant that is great. I've been there many times during LBO's rehearsal periods with many of my colleagues and we've enjoyed every meal. They're open 11 to 7 p.m. and that's daily, 11 to 7 p.m. daily, and they have weekend specials. You can do curbside pickup, or delivery. As a button to this particular episode, please enjoy Christmas in May as I highlight exterior lighting on this property. As I said at the beginning of this episode, I'd love to show pride and ownership by adding landscape lighting for any property that I purchase. I think it elevates the neighborhood. I think it looks great at night and at Christmas time, I step it up a notch and put even more lighting in there. So enjoy and remember 4 p.m. on Thursdays, Sid and Ash in the house. The first Noel the angels did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay, keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so, so deep. Noel, 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 born is the 
King of Israel.